right, let's get this started. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Fianna. I work at SideFX. And I'm here to share with you guys today the new MeasureSop 2.0. Um, some of you some of you may or may not know, uh, last week, Wednesday, we recently rolled out the latest release of our software, Houdini 17.5. Super fresh, uh, like Wednesday. So if you guys haven't checked it out, I would encourage you to visit sideeffects.com and grab the, the latest build and uh, give it a twirl. Um, so uh, some of the, the features uh, in Houdini 17.5 um, we're going to cover today, one of them being the measure sop. And uh, you're thinking, like, what about it? Like, why should I care about the measure sop? Well, if you're a 3D artist and you work in the viewport and you have anything to do with selecting geometry, then you probably want to know about this because maybe it can help uh, speed up your um, or reduce the time at your desk um, and just like make your life easier. So uh, in Houdini, as with any other software application, you have um, you have the options to just like manually select, so just like click, click and uh, box select, or paintbrush select and uh, grab your components like points, edges, faces, um, and that's that's one way to do it. Um, but there's also something I would call mathematical because uh, math can do magical things. I know nothing about that, but I just know that uh, I'm able to uh, do things that I normally would have. To a very long time to do if I were to do them manually. So these uh, mathematical options allow me to work faster. Um, but getting back to the manual uh, options, we did add some new updates to the options uh, to select uh, our geometry in the viewport, uh, two of them, one of them being select by pattern, and the second being select by face normal. So uh, I'm just going to hop to Houdini. And if the mouse starts scrolling, just uh, excuse it, because this is an angled platform, so it's kind of tricky. So um, you know, normally, if you had to, oops, if you had to select uh, this geometry, uh, if you had to do like a, a ring, that's pretty fast to do, right? Like you just click and you you grab the the full uh, ring of faces. But if you had to pick every second face, then oh, sometimes you might not be accurate and you click something else and you got to go deselect it and then go back around all the way. And that's not really ideal because it takes time. And what if you needed to, uh, you see, uh, what if you needed to grab the stuff inside, then you got to like tumble around, you got to zoom in, then you got to adjust your clipping plane, all the jazz, and all these things take time. Um, with the addition of the select by pattern in Houdini 17.5, we can now, oops, we can now just create a pattern. So I just grab these two faces. I hit Shift P. Uh, sorry, my mouse is. <sighs> this is going to be hard. <laughs> okay, stay. So uh, if I hit Shift P, you can see in the top left corner something flashed. If you didn't see it, I'll do it again. Shift P. That just tells Houdini, like, this is the pattern that I want. And if you keep hitting Shift P, it'll just overwrite the, the pattern that you set. So if you wanted like two spaces or one space or whatever space, then you just create whatever selection you want. And you can add to that. Uh, so you just hold down Shift. And then using the cursor keys, um, I can hit down to select counterclockwise or up to go the other way. So depending on what you want to grab, then you just do that. And if you want to add to that pattern selection, then you can hold, hold down Shift and grab the other, um, the left right cursor keys, and you can add to that and keep going back around like so, right? So if I do that, and if I want to keep adding and I want this stuff inside and outside, um, I did that like in a matter of seconds. But if I had to do that manually, uh, like, well, I'm still doing it manually, but uh, if I had to do it the uh, previous, like, Houdini 17 version, then I would have to just, you know, tumble around, find all those, uh, you know, areas that I want to grab. Maybe I have to switch the wireframe depending on complexity of my model. And that just, you know, that just takes time. And when you have to do that, like, 100,000 times, then, like, you're at your desk all day. 
So that's select by pattern. OK, uh, next we're going to look at the, if my mouse can work. Uh, sorry, I think I have to, something happened, something happened to, OK, why did it lock? Um, all right, let me just. This is strange. Um, maybe I can borrow like a notebook. Yeah, thanks. I don't know if the white's going to work. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll just grab this just in case. OK. So will this work? Oh, terrible. Sorry. It might read that better. Thanks. No. <laughs> um, OK, maybe I don't know why that's happening. OK, let me just like minimize that. And I will make a new, oops, wrong split, a new. It's not letting me. Sorry, do you guys mind if I just restart Houdini session? OK, let's just kill that. Uh, just killed it. Thanks. Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, OK, cool. Just give me a sec. I have not had that happen before. Of course, it happens on presentation. Mm. <laughs> OK, so I'm just going to kill that guy and go here. Oops. All right, so I've got my crate. And uh, so the next, um, next update that we have to uh, allow you to select things faster uh, is select by face normal. And what that means is I just maximize that. So let's say I needed to grab uh, these, this panel of faces in the back. So if I wanted to do that normally, and then depending on how the model was made, I could double click, but that gives me the whole section. That's not what I want. So if I had to do that the old way, then I would have to just like grab all of this, but that's again time consuming. So with the new option to select by normal, which is the button up here, I have the option to adjust my uh, face normal uh, value and thereby just setting the, the area that I want to get. So just one click, I got that. If I want to uh, grow that, then I can hold this, uh, change it, change the value, and just add to that. Um, if I want a bigger surface, then just a single click that, and so on and so forth. So if I change that to 90, then you know the single click, I get that. Maybe I'm missing some faces, but you know, at the same time, that was like one click. And if I had to do that myself to isolate all those parts, then that's probably like way longer, right? So just like five clicks or so. So that's select by normals. Uh, but what about that's the manual option? What about the mathematical? That is where the measure stop 2.0 comes in. Uh, so we did have a previous uh, measure SOP. Um, it was it allowed you to analyze the surface, but uh, with the 2.0, we have uh, added some new bells and whistles. So I kill this. Uh, oh, here. So if I just uh, hit Tab and append there a measure SOP, Shift Enter, I don't have anything happening in the viewport. And why is that? Um, if that if that happens, then just make sure your mouse is in the 3D viewport, hit the Enter key, and you'll see the new visualizer that's built in. And here you have the colors that you can choose. Um, for the stuff that I've been using it for, I found that uh, two colors is enough. So I'm just going to kill the middle. And then I'm going to change the red one, because that screams error. So something more chill, uh, green, and then the other one. And that still kind of looks the same, right? Um, nothing, nothing really happened. I'm just going to switch around my, my view here. 
this one. Oops. No. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oops. What? Um, like, just change this? I mean, oh, just, uh, yeah, I can. Um, and then just try to change that one. This is a good, okay, all right. Um, let's try that. And, okay, that's weird. Uh, so I just want to add this, but it doesn't let me. Okay, all right, I'll stop complaining. Um, let me put this back down. And here you can see I have my, uh, my parameters for the measures up. Um, so you can notice that there's a number of options uh, again, I should hit Enter key to see my visualizer. And you can also notice that there's a little HUD thingy up here. So uh, I generally don't read that too much, but like you can find that there's uh, value ranges that you can just pick up right away. If your screen is not, uh, if you're not uh, clicking on the measure stop to look at the values, then this can be handy for you. Uh, but the trick that I found, because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to think about it, I like to put down a color stop at the end uh, so that I can just tag the output from the measure stop because that's what actually is handy about the measure stop. And that's the thing that allows you to grab the selections mathematically um, by just uh, like enabling one thing, actually two things. So if you scroll to the bottom of the measure stop, uh, when you click on output or when you see output, enable the range group. This will output, there's a default name. You can just change it to what you want. Um, so I'm just keeping it in range. And then make sure that you click on bake visualized range into output. So now I can go to my color stop and I'm pretty sure that was set to primitive. And now I'm gonna change this to a color that I can see. And it's still full green because I didn't specify to use the in range. And this here, you can see there's like super tiny dots, but uh, if I just click on the measure stop and pin this and go back to here, I can adjust my slider to grow or shrink my selection. But it's not super visible because uh, there's actually three modes that you can use in the width uh, like control. So there's 1.0, 1, 1 there's SD and MAD. What the hell do those mean? Um, the 1.0 is just the direct input. So if you don't want to have if you don't want to have any like extra math going on to like average your numbers, just uh, set it to one. Um, that's what I found to be easiest because I don't want to have to um, find some number that I need to get to to get the selection I want. Um, the same with center. So if you click on center, uh, there's fixed, mean, and median. And the last two are pretty much like the SD, which is standard deviation, and MAD, which is median average deviation. And those are just like basically like two levels of averaging, uh, depending on what your geometry is looking like and uh, what kind of things you want to get as a surface analysis. So if I set this, if I set that back to one, if I change the center to fix, that just means that Houdini is going to start from the center of the face in this case. Uh, and then start measuring from, from the center point zero. Uh, if I add more to that, it will start with an offset to begin measurement. Um, right now, nothing's going on because like the, the width is obviously too big, so it's already grabbing everything. Maybe if I keep changing it down to something smaller, it will reduce. So again, like the tricky thing is to find that magic number, so to speak. Um, and there you go. So. I had some selections going on. And if I go back to my prepared videos, I just uh, grab some, some ranges that work for me to show you guys better uh, what kind of geometry you can grab using just 0, 0.0 to 0 0.3 for this crate. And then if you go to a little bit bigger to 1.5, then you grab like a lot of that. Um, and what can you use that for? Well, you can use this for like shader mask um, so if you have like base, three base uh, materials that you want to just layer, if you need to do like a hundred different crates, all with different looks, you don't want to have to like make mass for each of those manually, uh, cause like 
now there's the measure sub. So um, that's, that's the parameter. Um, there are a number of uh, measurement options. So this one is area. Um, again, really, it just, oh, uh, it just really depends on what, what kind of uh, geometry you want to get as an output. Um, so you can see even smaller number, uh, 0 0.01, uh, which was less than the parameter. Um, it's grabbing a whole lot already. Next, we have curvature. So here, if I wanted to do uh, like those crates um, and use these selections as the mass, I can just grab that information and put it in my material and uh, do many layered effects uh, to change the look of my crate. So uh, within, print, within curvature, if I go back to Houdini, um, here, if I set this to curvature, you can see there's a number of different modes as well. And all of those will give you slightly different results or like dramatically different results depending on what your geometry looks like. Uh, and then if I go back to um, my slides, there's boundary, boundary integral, which uh, gives you the option to, oops, gives you the option to work um, to isolate the axes that you want to start from. So this one is the X, next is the Y, and there's also the, the Z. So, damn. <laughs> I was trying to scrub the video. Um, anyway, so the measure sub allows you to uh, do a lot of quick surface analysis, uh, regardless of, of uh, like geometry type, whether it's hard surface geometry or a character. If you had uh, to do grooming for your character, for example, and you wanted to have like a really hairy dude, um, maybe the concave areas are like shorter hair and the con, wait, I said that the other way. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> so you can, you can uh, use all of these values to drive uh, the different lengths of uh, hair, for example. So um, hard surface geometry characters, uh, and then as you saw, uh, it works on large things too. So uh, we're talking about terrains, of course. Um, so here, oh no, that's not it. <laughs> um, so this is a video that I recorded, but I actually wanted to switch to the live Houdini. So if I go to turn off my crates and go to my height field, so the thing about uh, measure stop for height fields is if you, if you didn't create your terrain using uh, Houdini high field tools, um, you may not get the, the mass data that you would normally get when you do an erosion, for example, or use the other tools within Houdini to uh, you know, isolate certain areas for scattering, um, as an example. So uh, if I go to my camera, you can see here in my terrain, I have a number of uh, assets, different assets scattered throughout. Um, and all of these were placed mathematically uh, using the measure sub. Uh, none of them was, uh, was uh, hand placed. And if you had to do that yourself, I mean, like that's kind of brutal, right? Like so many assets and then somebody's going to change their mind then you have to do it again. Um, and so as I was saying before, if you didn't create your terrain inside Houdini and you don't have the masking information uh, or you got geometry from somebody else and they baked already the, the terrain or you're working from World Machine or Vue um, or working with satellite data. Um, if you go to open topography uh, or Google it, um, you can see the, the map of the world and you can isolate certain areas. This one, some cool area in Sudan that looked interesting for me. So I just picked that uh, area and I exported out a TIFF, a geo TIFF, and I brought it in with the high field file. So I have zero information about any of the curvature or like uh, concavities of this terrain. So how would I otherwise populate this without having to do it manually? Um, that is where the measure stop comes in. And I'm just going to go here and make a new one and show you guys if I put down a measure stop and hit the enter key again. So here I have some visual data that kind of tells me the like plus and minus, I guess, of the terrain. 
Um, again, I like to use just two colors because that's enough for what I need to isolate the parts that I want to scatter geometry on. And I'll probably just do this one last time because I'm going to save that as my default. Uh, save as permanent defaults. Um, yeehaw. So uh, again, I'm going to output the range group. And this time, I'm going to just call it scatter test. And I will change that to points. And did I, did I enable that? No, I didn't. So that part is important. And now I'm going to just, again, stuff that color sop at the end and grab this scatter test, color that, and boom, that's my mm -hmm. The green parts are where I can potentially scatter uh, rocks or trees or anything. Um, so let's do that, actually. So if I put down a scatter slab, um, that is going to, I think I should switch to black. That's going to scatter points across the whole tile, which is not what I want. So what I actually want, but I need to create the attribute first so that I can plug in that scatter test uh, area that I want. And I'll just call this scatter boxes. And uh, here we go. Plug that, oh, sorry. Uh, density, I want to plug that into this and turn off the force total count. 10 is super high, so I'm just going to change it to 1. And I'm going to use that scatter boxes to place um, to actually just you know drop down the points where I want those points to be. And now I can adjust density because maybe that's too high, or I can go back to my measure sop and adjust the, the amounts. And this time I'm going to use actually gradient because that's going to help me calculate the uh, angle of the slope. And uh, maybe I'm going to change that to Y component. And I can't really see all that well, which is why the color node is handy. Um, but I'm going to pin this. So I'm going to just jump back a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to change this down to a smaller number. But if I really want to just like find the magic number that I was talking about that sometimes can be hard to find, what I can actually do is turn off the width. Now that I know 3 will give me something, I can just enable the min and max and set the max to 3. And the two is, I don't actually know. So I'm just going to move my, oh, there. I'm just going to move my slider until I get something. And there. I, what was that number? Did anyone see? <laughs> uh, I'm going down. Plus, make up your mind, people. <laughs> oh, jeez. OK. Uh, yeah. All right, so. 0.1. All right, cool. So now if I look on my scatter points, well, it's really foggy up here. Um, you can see that my points are just on those areas that are um, grabbed from the, the measure sub or evaluated from the measure sub. And then now I can just drop down a box or a cube, like the rest of the world calls it. Um, and I'll just change that to. 0.5, and then this 6, and then I'll just do a copy to points and plug these guys in. Ta -da. And there I have my trees. So then I can just put down a merge sop, plug this guy, and uh, that one is a little far. This guy, and I can see what potentially my assets would look like. And those trees are ginormous. So just like, yeah, put that to one. And if I want to change the, the stuff, I can just move my slider. And that's it. I don't have to paint anything, make any new selections. Uh, I can show you guys what I did here. Um, what I actually used also the measure stop for was to calculate the curvature of uh, kind of details that I want to retain. Uh, and then I used that in a poly reduce to maintain those signature features to further crunch it down. 
Then I made a couple of masks. If you can see it. I made a couple of different masks. And this one is using surface integral, Y component. This one is a normal component, surface integral. And this last one is gradient. Did you guys see that one? Maybe not. So here you can see just kind of like the, the outlays of the, the rock, rock uh, formations. So then using those measure stops, I just scattered some assets that are, you know, obviously easily replaceable and I can just freely explore what my environment can look like just by changing up my measure stop values, switching up assets and putting them together. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the measure stop 2.0. Um, thank you guys for attending. I hope you found it useful.